To understand users, you need to access Active Directory directory services. To access this, you need to go to the Start menu and look for Active Directory Users and Computers. This can be found under Windows Administrative Tools. On click, this opens up a snap-in which will show you the user's container and other containers within the domain that we will be creating, north.com, in this training. North.com is the parent node and as you can see there are many other containers within it. Most of the containers are empty such as built-in, computers, but as you can see the domain controller's container has an entry for this particular domain controller or this machine you can call it, which is also the global catalog server, the GC. The other important container with respect to this lecture is the users container. This contains the users and the groups. Looking at the type column, you can see which one is a group and which one is a user. These are all the different default groups and users created under Active Directory. There is another snap-in which I'll show you later which will provide more information. But over here, if you look at the properties of the user's container, it will not show you much information, such as you only see the description over here. Clicking on the properties of the user itself, you'll see much more options, which you can use to edit the particular user and its properties. For example, you can see the description over here. And if you click on the account tab, you'll be able to see the username and other information such as what are the account options and the account expiry, etc. The other snap-in I'm going to show you is the ADSI edit snap-in. This is again under Windows Administrative Tools. This will probably show you the same information, but in a different format. On click, this opens this snap-in, ADSI Edit, and as you can see, you can see the north.com domain on the top, and other containers that we already looked at. If we jump to the user's container, you can see the class over here, which specifies whether the particular object is a user or a group. Clicking on the properties of the user's container, you can see more information over here rather than the previous snap-in that we looked at. For example, the description and another important attribute over here which is the object category, which shows that this is a container. Similarly, we'll also look at the properties of the user as well, and I'll show you how it differs. So I'll pick the username guest and click on properties. This again shows you the description of that particular object or the user, the distinguished name which is the unique name of that particular user, and some other information such as class and object category. As you can see the class over here and the object category which is person as this is a user object. So this view is over. We'll go back to the original view of Active Directory users and computers and we'll discuss more on creating a user 
and having a look at what all options are provided to us. In your NPS training, you might not need to perform this activity, but you need to be sure what needs to be done by the Active Directory admin, or even if it's you, you need to know what all options are available to you. So if you look at the user itself, there is an all tasks option in the context menu. It'll give you all kinds of options. So I'll create a user within the users container over here. Right click on it and go to new and user. Clicking on this will open up a wizard providing your options to configure this user. You are provided with options such as first name, last name, full name, a username to be provided in both user principal name format and NetBIOS format, which is pre-Windows 2000. Not all of it is mandatory, but you need to provide the user logon name and of course the first name. I'll fill in most of the information just to be sure. And I've created a username called Edward. Clicking on Nest will give you the option to provide a password over here. The password is very interesting over here. You cannot just put any password. You have to meet the complexity requirements of Windows. So I'll show you that if you put in a simple password, what happens to that particular user when you create it? Put in a simple password over here and click on next. And when I click on finish, you'll see that I'll get a pop-up error message stating that it doesn't meet the complexity requirements. Here you go, this is the error message. As you can see, this is very strict in Windows environments. So you have to be sure about the password and whether it meets the complexity requirements if you're the one creating it. The users also need to be educated about this complexity requirement in Windows. So I'll put a good password which meets it, of course, and I'll submit it so I can create a user. This user is now part of the north.com domain, as you can see, and it received the type of user. We'll use this user later in the training. So let me show you where all of this password complexity is managed. You need to go to local security policy. You can access this from the same Windows administrative tools. Within that, you have security settings and account policies. Under account policies, you have password policy. And when you click on password policy, it will tell you the complexity requirements. You are of course, as an administrator, allowed to edit this and maybe make it more secure or bring it down. But I would recommend you either leave it to default or make it more strict if you're required to do that as per your company policies. So as you can see, when I click on it, it'll explain you what it really means and what are the requirements to provide a password. You can share this with your end users as well so that they ensure that the password is meeting this requirement. So that's about it for local security policy and also about the users, although you do not need this in the NPS training, you might not be working on this, but you need to be sure about the options that are provided to you.